shredded and outcoached. Those are the two words Matt LaFleur uses to talk about Joe Barry post the Tampa Bay Buccaneers game. But there is good news on the horizon for the Green Bay Packers. What am I talking about before I get into that? Take a second to hit the subscribe button. Okay, so reporters interview Matt LaFleur and they ask him, are you going to fire Joe Barry? His response is, uh, yeah, now is not the time for that, to be honest with you. And then when reporters ask why not Joe Barry, I mean, Matt LaFleur says, because now is not the time. I'm trying to find solutions. I got to get back and take a look at film. The article goes on to say that perhaps Matt LaFleur meant that immediately after the game wasn't the time to consider that, but it's possible that LaFleur meant he wouldn't consider taking action until after the season like he did with his previous defensive coordinator as well as his two special teams coordinators. So what is Joe Barry's track record before coming to Green Bay in 2021 when he was with Washington and Detroit? Um he ranked their defenses ranked 28th to 32nd in the NFL. That is awful. That is awful. So let me read you where the Green Bay Packers are at currently. Uh, as far as defensively, time of possession, Green Bay ranks 22nd overall. They also rank 26 um, in third down opponent conversion percentage. 22nd in fourth down conversion percentage, 22nd in total yards allowed, 30th in rushing yards allowed, 22nd in sacks, 26th in defensive passer rating, and 29th in rushing first down completion percentage um, for the opponents. That is awful. That is awful. So the good news for the Green Bay Packers is that I feel Matt LaFleur has finally reached his tipping point. And if you remember earlier in the season, Matt LaFleur is, is super frustrated with Joe Barry and their performance defensively. And he kind of just gives Joe Barry a one last ditch effort. And it's just like, hey, Joe is pretty much, he pretty much said Joe's got this season to prove if he is going to keep his job or not. And the writing is on the wall. Joe Barry will be going. You can you can bank on that. And if not, that's bad news for Matt LaFleur because Matt LaFleur needs to go then if that's the case because he needs to part ways with this guy. It's not a lack of talent, okay? Because comparatively, when you look at Washington's team as opposed to Detroit's team, uh, it says right here, Barry has uh, was supposed to have better talent than the previous stops. The Packers have put as many as eight first round picks defensively on that side of the ball. So what did Joe Barry have to say or what was Joe Barry um, doing right here? It says Joe Barry committed to a planning a heavy amount of zone defense against the Bucks, and Mayfield picked it apart. He completed 28 of uh, 22 of 28 for 381 yards and four touchdowns. Barry played a zone defense 60%, 66% of the time. That is awful. That is awful. You've got to be able to adjust. Joe Barry has got to go. Tommy DeVito last week was Offensive Player of the Week. Um, and Baker Mayfield this week is inevitably going to be player Offensive Player of the Week. That's back-to-back -back weeks where you've got quarterbacks putting up Offensive Player of the Week against your defense. And let's be honest with ourselves. Tommy DeVito is not a good quarterback. Either is Baker Mayfield, but they look Amazing. In fact, perfect, according to his passer rating of 158.3%, four touchdowns. Joe Barry's got to go. The good news for the Green Bay Packers is Matt LaFleur, I think, has finally reached his tipping point. He is gone. Bye, Joe Barry. Go Pack.